Myofascial slings, uh, functional exercises, functional rehabilitation, functional fitness. Uh, these are all new words to describe a new way of thinking about movement uh, and especially how it relates to new ways to do exercises. So first what I want to do is contrast it to a lot of traditional exercises. Traditional exercises with, uh, let's say with free weights or even machine weights are you know, curls for the girls. That's what we used to say when I was in my 20s. But they're isolation exercises. I am specifically trying to work one muscle group or I'm gonna do hamstring curls or leg extensions. But this, this term myofascial slings or exor functional exercises for myofascial slings, it's this new way of thinking about the body and the connective tissues and how things work together. And instead of trying to get muscle, muscles like big and bulky, it's more geared towards let's have better movement, better athletic performance, because that's what helps protect our joints more. It makes us feel better. So let's, I'm going to talk to you about the four different slings and then give you an example exercise, maybe two example exercises uh, for some of these. The first sling I'm going to talk about is called the anterior oblique sling. The anterior oblique sling are the muscles on the sides of your body that do this crisscross pattern like this here. So let's, and they're on both sides of course, but let's just say I'm talking about the left side here. There is a muscle on the under surface of your wing bone or your scapula that does this. And it meshes and it blends with a stomach muscle called your external oblique that meshes and blends with another muscle over here called your internal oblique. And then that functionally attaches to some uh, hip stability muscles in here. So let's look at one example exercise that you could do for this. Um, and that is going to be, you know, I call it this single arm push. Now what I'm doing here, it, and it just mimics reaching, but in sports it would mimic throwing a punch or uh, any kind of a swing. So any kind of a rotational swing movement that would be a golf swing, a baseball swing or anything like that. This exercise would be applicable to train that pattern. So what I'm doing here is I'm reaching this way, not across the body like that. I don't want to get tangled up and do things with my neck. I'm trying to get that movement, this here that I was talking about. So we've got this and we've got this. Now I said the obliques. So those are some of the rotational movements. So the most common mistake I see with this exercise are that people want to kind of go like this. I see it all the time. There's this going on, but what we're trying to do is train this rotational movement here. So I've got that reach going on and you notice my chest is facing this way. Now it's facing straight ahead. So those are single arm push exercises, working that anterior oblique sling. And of course you'd want to do both sides, make it balanced. Um, as far as how many, that's kind of personal preference and what you're going for. So in this video, I'm going to show you videos, but, I, you know, ideally you could do that 12 times. You could do it 20 times. So you'd kind of, that's something you'd work with, with a personal trainer and see what your goals are. Um, let's just turn around and look at the opposite side. So that was the anterior oblique. Let's talk about the posterior oblique sling. And the posterior oblique sling is this crisscross pattern of the back muscles. The big, large muscle in the back of your shoulder and back here is called the lat or the latissimus. And it meshes and it blends with the opposite side, big butt muscle or the glute muscle. And these right through here have this common attachment point and they work collectively together. In the gait cycle, when you walk, when you run, when you take off, you're using these muscles together. So a way that we can work those, and there's lots of uh, exercises you could do, but since we were using the uh, band here, I'm just gonna show you another exercise with a band. To work the lat, that's just some kind of a pull movement in here. Now, if you wanted to get this opposite side glute involved, what you could do is kind of have a stagger stance and then you're going to be here and then you're going to come up right through that. You could even lift this leg up and then come up right through that. So that would be an example of working the posterior oblique sling. If you like yoga and you want something a little bit more simplistic, you don't have bands, just even doing a, a traditional bridge, especially when you put your hands, when I press my hand into the floor, that's going to help engage that lat. When I bring my hip up, my pelvis up, 
that's going to engage my glutes. So you're gonna, now that's gonna work uh, all four muscles. You're gonna work both sides equally. But you could easily kind of change it and do your single leg, you know, right in through here and press more through this side here, press through that glute, and then come up. So those are two examples of working your posterior oblique sling. Let's look at something called the lateral chain. And your lateral chain is some more side stomach muscles here, muscles called, they call the transverse abdominis muscle in here. So this is an important stabilizer of your entire pelvis. Um, and then working the glutes Mead on the opposite side. So there are different layers of glutes. So the first time I said your glute, but I said the glute max, that's the muscle that extends your hip, but the glute med muscle is more on the side and it's the muscle that resists falling over. So when I do this standing on one leg, this muscle is activated to keep me from falling over. Um, and then at the same time, I've got muscles on this side that are kind of helping to keep my pelvis up right there. So that's your lateral chain. So the lateral chain is you standing on one leg. So exercises standing on one leg are ways you would activate your lateral chain. And then I'm a big fan of anything balance related in here, especially these things called hip airplanes. I've got lots of videos on these here too if you wanna check out some of our videos. Um, but those are uh, great exercises. Oh, and then I forgot to mention also some of the stance muscles uh, in here. So the inside growing muscle in there could be a good one. So you could even do things called Copenhagen planks to get this through here. So it's kind of a plank. So I'm gonna get the side stomach muscle, but then I'm gonna get this deep hip muscle in here. And then some people will even add these little movements in through here. So there's a couple of ideas of a lateral chain exercise. And then finally, I wanna give you some examples of something, some exercises that are good for what are called the posterior chain. These are your hamstrings also your glutes, and then also your back strap muscles in here. So these low back muscles, what they call the erector muscles that keep you upright. These could be things like deadlifts. These could be things like kettlebell swings. I'll just show you a deadlift first. So your deadlift would be what you would want is good form. And you want to do what's called a hip hinge. And a hip hinge means your hips go back, but your chest can come forward a little bit versus a squat, your squat is a little bit more where you use your quads. And so your squat's gonna look a little bit more, your butt goes down, but your chest stays a little bit more upright. And notice how my knees can come forward a little bit more too. So this is your squat, but your hinge is this here. So a deadlift, it's usually encouraged to use a little bit more of a hinge movement with your deadlift. So an example would be if I'm gonna use a kettlebell and there's, there, you could use barbells and there's a lot of different things you could do. But let's say we're using a kettlebell, the weight would be in between your feet. My hips would go back. I would wanna make sure I'm not rounded in here, but I'm here and then you would come up like this. And as you do these, you're using those hamstrings, you're using the glutes, you're using the back muscles. You could do something called a, a Romanian deadlift, which is a little bit more, even less of the knee bend and you're a little bit more, your knees aren't locked, but they're just slightly bent. And then that could be like that there and you would come up. You could even do a kettlebell swing and I've got another video on a kettlebell swing, so I'm not gonna over explain this right now, but it's a little bit more dynamic and that would be, and now I'm gonna thrust up. And then my back is being used as a stabilizer. So all these muscles are, Contracting is stabilizers, holding me in place, but all the movement and the power and the strength coming from my hamstrings and my glutes in there. So those are your four uh, different myofascial slings, as they're called. There is another component that they call the intrinsic core, and that is your diaphragm, your pelvic floor muscle, some of those side muscles, those transverse abdominis, and the deepest muscles of your low back. And there's a whole world of core stability exercises. So if you want to watch the, uh, that, I've got, uh, I've got dozens of videos on core exercises. But really, this is to say the four myofascial slings. So hopefully you got some good information and contrast that to traditional exercises. As always, if you have questions, let me know. I love to answer your questions.